Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be giving you a full guide to using the iPad as a student. Now I know the iPad definitely isn't a cheap device, it's not budget friendly, especially if you add in any cost of like apps or accessories that you might need with it. But I use the iPad as a student and it's definitely one of my favorite devices that I've had and it really helped a lot when I was a student. I first do want to take a look at just all the iPads and which one I recommend for students and then we can get into using the iPad as a student. Now in the iPad lineup, we have the plain iPad, we have the iPad Air and we have the iPad iPad Pro. So for the student who's just looking for a note-taking device to do assignments or watch entertainment, the iPad 10th gen is definitely more than enough for what you're looking for. And previously with the 10th gen iPad, you could only use the first gen Apple Pencil, but now we actually have a new Apple Pencil which was released, which is the USB-C Apple Pencil. This is really nice because unlike the first gen Apple Pencil, it does attach magnetically to your iPad and it's more budget friendly. So that's also a really nice option with the 10th gen iPad. Now, if you don't wanna go the 10th gen route, you can also go for the iPad Air. It's definitely the best bang for the buck. With the Air, you get the powerful M1 chip, you get compatibility with the second gen Apple Pencil, which charges magnetically, which is really convenient. And you also get other accessories like the Magic Keyboard, which is just really nice for that iPad. And then the last option which is available is a Pro. This is definitely overkill for most students, especially if you're not gonna be using this as your like a main computer. But if the iPad is your sole device, you can't go wrong with a Pro, obviously. It's definitely powerful and more than capable of what you want to throw at it but yeah the pro is also an option next i want to cover some accessories so you're going to need a stylus especially for note taking so there are third party options available for styluses but if you can i still recommend just going for an apple original apple pencil it's the best it works the best with the devices obviously it's catered to it um now depending on which model you're gonna get, it's gonna decide which Apple Pencil you're gonna get. Like I said, we now have a new budget-friendly USB-C Apple Pencil. So it charges via a USB-C port on the Apple Pencil and it can attach magnetically to the side of the iPad. It doesn't charge via that magnetic connection, but it just attaches, which just makes it more convenient. And the only big difference with this Apple Pencil is that it doesn't have pressure sensitivity, but if that's not a deal breaker for you, I definitely recommend getting that Apple Pencil. And then the other options is just this first gen or the second gen, which has pressure sensitivity. Now, as for what iPad I have, I have the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. I have the 12.9 inch size. It's very big. I actually prefer the 11 inch, but with that, I have the second gen Apple Pencil. Definitely one of my favorite accessories for the iPad. Couldn't go without it, so I highly recommend getting an Apple Pencil. Now with this goes a screen protector. If you're gonna be taking notes with your Apple Pencil, I definitely recommend getting a paper feel, paper-like screen protector. I've had mine for like two years. I just recently got a new one because it does smoothen out over time, but it just makes the world of difference. It helps with neater handwriting, which is really nice. And it's just a great feel when writing with the Apple Pencil. The next accessory is a case. So I have two types of cases. I have a folio case and then a magic keyboard. The folio case is from ESR. I mostly use this when I'm using or writing with the Apple Pencil. I like that I can easily adjust the angle of the case and that just helps to easily take notes. And then the other case, like I said, is the Magic Keyboard. Now this is not necessary for everyone, but if you're looking for a good keyboard case, I'm definitely gonna recommend this one to you. It has a great typing experience and the trackpad is very useful when you're just working on the iPad. It's definitely the best keyboard case you're gonna get, but if you're not looking to pay the price of the Magic Keyboard, then you can just get any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or trackpad and it will give you kind of the same experience. Now let's get to the actual note-taking on the iPad. My favorite app for this is GoodNotes. I have made a whole bunch of videos on GoodNotes lately that I will link in the description but it's definitely my go-to app for note-taking. I also prefer the user experience and user interface in GoodNotes compared to other apps that I've tried. Um, in GoodNotes you have like a folder organization system which feels familiar to most apps and you can just create notebooks or import files to annotate in GoodNotes. For students specifically, GoodNotes 6 did introduce like an exam prep book section in their store where you can find interactive exam preps that you can work through. 
You can also create flashcards in GoodNotes and it also gives you notifications when it recommends you review those flashcards or you can just use it for regular note taking. GoodNotes is really such a powerful app and it has so many new features regularly introduced so I highly recommend checking it out. Other alternative apps, one that is very similar to GoodNotes is Notability. I used this a lot when I was a student, also just like a note taking app. You can also use Apple's Freeform app. This is really cool for creating mood boards, planning out assignments, all that kind of stuff. Apple Notes is also an option. It's default on your device. You can go ahead and type out notes. You can handwrite notes and you can add in media, links, PDFs, all that kind of stuff in notes. And then the last app I recommend is OneNote. This is part of Microsoft Suite. And again, you can type out notes, you can handwrite notes. It's also a really nice app. For productivity apps, one of my favorite apps is definitely Notion. Notion is kind of like an all-in-one app. You can do literally anything in there. You can use it for life planning, like to-do lists, habit trackers, book tracking, things like that. Or if handwriting notes isn't your thing, you can go ahead and type out notes in Notion. They have some cool options and features and tables that you can include into your notes. If you are new to Notion, it can be very intimidating at times to just know how to use it. So I do recommend using templates at the beginning, kind of to just get comfortable with the app. And after that, really, it's amazing. You can do literally anything in there. Another app that I love for day-to-day -day planning is Structured. It's a simple free app to time block your day and the UI combined with how minimal it is makes it a great app for me to just structure out my day and see everything that I need to get done. And it also has this focus now feature which allows you to just kind of stay in the zone and focus for that time that you set for a certain task. And another option for planning and productivity is also just using a digital planner. I've used digital planners in GoodNotes and it's really such a great experience. You get the feel of writing things down but the convenience of having it digitally so that means you can easily easily move things around, erase things without ruining your planner. I also like that I can view it on my phone or other devices, so I highly recommend just trying out digital planning and seeing if it works for you. Also, I love using the iPad to be creative, so if you are looking for a creative outlet, some apps that I like is Canva or Procreate. Canva is really nice because it is free and you get so many templates that is available to you. You can use it for assignments, creating graphics, all that kind of stuff. So for any student, I highly recommend using Canva, or if you're just looking for a creative outlet, Canva can be that for you too. Also, Procreate is also on the iPad. It's one of my favorite apps for drawing. Um, I use this a lot, again, for like when I was in school for assignments and things, or if I just wanted to draw, if you're an artist degree, you can also use Procreate for that. Canva is free, but Procreate is about like $10, but those are creativity apps that I recommend. Next, I wanna take a look at some reading apps. I mentioned this in my How I Use My iPad video, but there are so many useful reading apps on iPad, and as a student, you're probably gonna be reading a lot. I love using the Kindle app and I also have Kindle Unlimited which I think is like $12 a month and you get access to so many books. So if you love reading or reading for fun, there are some amazing books on there. I also have a Kindle so having my books on my Kindle and on my iPad is also just really nice as it syncs up. And another app for reading is also Libby. All you need to use Libby is a library card and you just sign in with your library card number to your library and you get access to all the digital books that's available in your library. It's very handy, you can just borrow books and it's free, so that's really nice. Next, I just wanna share with you some iPad OS tips that could maybe enhance your usage of your iPad. The first tip I have is to use focus on the iPad. This is really helpful to reduce distractions so you can mute certain notifications and you can create custom home screen setups to help you best concentrate on your desired focus. You can also turn on stage manager in settings. This is really helpful for a multi tasking and you can also easily resize and organize the windows in stage manager i also just recommend getting comfortable with using split view and slide overview this is going to be very helpful if you're using multiple apps at once and also you can easily drag and drop between apps i use this often for photos and you can also hold down on the subject of any photo and drag that over into an app like goodnotes in ipadOS 17 we also now have the option to create custom stickers from photos and you can access these in messages or in your emoji keyboard these has some really cute effects that can help spruce up your notes or diagrams. Another helpful feature is taking a screenshot of a full web page. You just click on full page when you've taken the screenshot and you can export that as a PDF and use it in apps like GoodNotes to annotate. You can also create quick notes by dragging up from the bottom right corner. This is also really helpful if you want to save any links or just quickly jot down a thought. And then lastly, you can easily scan any document in Apple Notes. And what's really nice about Apple Notes is that you have some filters that you can add to that note to give it your desired look. 
Then lastly, this is something that I feel like people don't talk about, but I highly recommend taking a look into getting any cloud-based storage. This is really helpful if your iPad breaks or you lose it, and it just gives you tremendous ease of mind that everything is backed up. My favorite is Apple iCloud Plus. It syncs across all my devices and I know that I can do like an entire device backup with that. Other options are like Google Drive or OneDrive. It sometimes just depends on what suite you're using. For instance, I know with Office 365, you get like free one terabyte of OneDrive storage. So just take a look into cloud storage. I just, I highly recommend it for any student. But that's all the advice and tips that I have for using the iPad as a student. Let me know in the comments if you already have an iPad, what are your biggest tips or advice for students who are looking into getting an iPad. I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, give this video a like. It really helps me out a lot. And just thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.